Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into polar coordinates, and now look further at the example series and go over example three, which looks at converting Cartesian uh, coordinates to polar coordinates. And in my last uh, example video, I went over going from polar to Cartesian, which was pretty straightforward. But it's a bit different when going from the uh, Cartesian or the basic x, y uh, axis coordinates in terms of polar coordinates. Yeah, and it's not as straightforward because you could have many, many points. In fact, infinite number of polar coordinates. So let's go over this example, which says represent the point with Cartesian coordinates 1 and negative 1 in terms of polar coordinates. And recall, this is just the x and y. So we have x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 1. So what we end up having is... Yeah, is basically if you were to graph this on an x, y axis like this, let's go x, y. So the point is you go right here, let's say one is here, that's x is one, and then negative one is, uh, let's just draw this further down, like this, say this is negative one, and it's the point here. So we have this point here, I'm going to call this C for Cartesian, and that's going to be one and negative one. Now, when uh, converting into polar, this is a bit interesting. Well, we could draw a triangle like this, and then a right angle triangle from there to there, where uh, this triangle, this has a, call this R right, like that. That's just the hypotenuse R. And then distance here, this is just our negative one. And here's just our one, this is the right angle. So what we have is that's our R, and we want to get R theta, where the angle and if it's positive, it goes like this. We'll call this uh, theta 1, right? Theta 1 like this. Or we could also go like theta 2 like this, where we call the convention. If you go clockwise, I mean, counterclockwise is positive. Counter, I mean, a regular clockwise is negative. So counterclockwise positive, clockwise is negative by um, the convention that I'm going over. And yeah, this, this distance is 1, this is negative 1 like that. And now for completeness sake, what we could also do here, because this R, if this is R if it's positive, but if we had R as negative, what we can actually have is a line like this, and then where this angle across, I'll call this theta three, and then what we would do is go backwards to a negative point here. So we could work all the way backwards like this, etc., going all the way to here, so where this full distance is r, where it's less than zero. So r is negative. And in black, we have r is greater than zero if we're just using this theta one or theta two. And likewise, we could also have, and we could also have a theta four going from here all the way around theta four. So as you can see, there's, we can have unlimited uh, types and you can even add uh, 360 degrees or two pi to it and loop it around and around. So you can have unlimited uh, numbers or unlimited ways to represent uh, these simple Cartesian coordinates. But in polar, you have unlimited ways of writing. So let's look at this triangle first. So recall Pythagoras theorem. And also uh, from my earlier video, I went over um, the connection from Cartesian and polar and went over how to do that uh, systematically. So what we have here, uh, Pythagorean theorem, we have in our case, r squared is equal to, so negative one squared and then plus one squared, the side squared, add up to hypotenuse squared. This equals, so that's just one plus one, that's just two. So then what we have is r is equal to, well, square root uh, plus or minus two. Yeah, no, so plus or minus square root two like that. So when, what we have here is, yeah, r squared is equal to two. Square root both sides. What we end up having is, yeah, this part here. So square root plus or minus square root two. So this is what we get. So we get r is equal to plus or minus square root two. And there you go. That's why I had the in red. It could be negative. It could be positive, And it's square root two like that. Now the choice of r will also change what our theta will be. And likewise, the choice of theta also changes the choice of r. So what we also have is we could use by definition the tangent here, um, uh, the tangent uh, trigonomic function. Yeah, so recall, recall. I'm just going extremely in depth just to show you <laughs> uh, the infinite number of ways you could do it. So recall 
tan theta. This equals to opposite over adjacent. But in the general one, it's just y over x, or the, the opposite side over the adjacent, so y over x. This just equals to, by definition, y over x. And in our case, equals to y is negative 1, and then x is 1. So this equals to negative 1. Yes, yeah, so since it equals to negative 1, this uh, recall again the graph of sine, I mean of tangent, looks something like this. If I, if I graph theta, we can have multiple values. Uh, y, let's just write tan theta like this. So tan theta, remember how the graph looks something like it goes up like this, asymptote line across, and I'll draw this downwards more. This is at negative pi over 2 or 90 degrees, this is at pi over 2, and then likewise we get another one going up like this, and going down, and then we also go up on this side as well. We need some space here. Draw this like this, and like that, and then this is, so it goes at pi over 2 each one. This is going to be pi over 2 plus pi, that's just pi, and then here's going to be pi over 2 plus pi, that's 3 pi over 2. And then finally, the full rotation is over here. This is just to get to the 2 pi. So add another pi over 2. That's 4 pi over 2 or 2 pi, etc. So what that means is at this negative 1 value, so let's say negative 1 is over here, well, we get two points. We get 1 and 2. And notice how these are from 0 to pi over 2. That's actually the 1 quadrant. And I'll uh, illustrate that right now. Yeah, I'll just illustrate that. So we have two points right here from 0 to 2 pi. So we have 1 or 2. And if we look at the quadrants, let's say we have this angle 0. Or let's say this is initially 0. Now what we have is, yeah, is pi over 2. And then here we have pi. And this is going to be 3 pi over 2. And then all the way to 2 pi like that. So the first quadrant is here. And that's in between here. The second quadrant is here. This is going to be, uh, yeah, this is actually second is over here. Second, and then third, because it's pi over 2 to pi. And then fourth is in here, all the way to the end. So as you can see here, we have two, uh, the second quadrant. Now we have the third. And this is four. And I'll put an arrow saying these are quadrants. Quad. Yeah, so from this one, this is the nature of the tan function. So we have negative 1. It could be in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. That's in between there. So in other words, it could be here or it could be here, depending on, yeah, depending on yeah, the angle that we uh, have. So it could be somewhere here and here. In other words, if we look at it like this, if this is the y, x line like that, so we can go from, because remember, it's just going to be y over x. So this is going to be like this. We draw a line like this from here to here. This is a negative 1, 1. And this angle is actually our pi over 2. And likewise, from here to here, uh, this, this one, we, it's the same thing. We're going to have the same ratio. T the tangent of this one is this is uh, negative 1 and 1. So both of them, we're going to get this negative 1 value. So it could be either there or there. Except in our case, we want this value. So this is where our uh, angle is going to be in the fourth quadrant here. That's because, well, we have this point is at 1, negative 1 here. But if we use a negative angle, we can go over there and then move backwards, etc. So there's a lot of ways of doing this. And also note, let's look at our, our exact trig ratio. So note. What we have, we have just a square, so easy way to memorizing it. Let's say we have a square where the sides are 1, 1, 1, 1. And if we split this, and these are all, you know, like this. this is 90 degrees, all these are 90 degrees, etc. And at this point, 90 degrees is just 2, I mean, it's just pi over 2. Yeah, so it's just pi over 2. So then if we split this in half, what we end up having is an angle pi over 4. So pi over 2 divided by 2. So this is pi over 4. So now what we have like this, the tan of this angle, tan pi over 4, is just, yeah, this just equals 2, well, 1.
Yeah, one over one. It's just one, like that. It goes one. Yeah, since uh, ten is all of this is just a ratio. So what we have now is well, tan of absolute value of the angle theta over two. Yeah, this is just well. Yeah, the same thing one over one here. Yeah, so a better written is actually here. This just equals to our angle theta over two, the absolute value of it, which is over here. But the only thing is negative like that, but the ratios are the exact same, one over one, etc. So thus, yeah, so thus what we have is, well, our theta over two is equal to negative pi over four, because that's just the absolute value of it. And again, clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive. And now if we want to get the first angle, uh, this one, theta one, that's just going to be all the way across here. We just subtract it from that. So in other words, uh, theta one equals two, two pi, 360 degrees, minus the absolute value of theta over two. That just equals to two pi minus uh, pi over four, times this by four over four, common denominator. We have an eight minus one, pi over four, like that. Eight minus one is just seven, like that. So seven pi over four, like that. So we have this angle, like that. And we also have theta one equals to seven pi over four, like that. And we also have, yeah, so we have these. We also have r, yeah, r is equal to, well, plus or minus square root two, so either one of those. And for completeness, let's, uh, let's find out what these angles were, this uh, theta three and theta four. But remember, the ratio is always gonna be the same, which is this, if the absolute value of the inner one or of this kind of angle, this right angle is always going to be the same thing, so pi over four. So if we were to determine uh, the pi over threes, well, that's going to be something like this. So if this is, remember, this is our, uh, this is theta two. So let's just look at the absolute value of this. This equals to pi over four. So then this absolute value is good just by looking at it. By symmetry, this is also going to be pi over four like that. So what that means is this angle there, this is going to be, if this is going to be, I'll just put one, negative one. This is going to be at negative one, one. So just exactly symmetric. This angle, theta three, this equals two. Yeah, well, this equals to the full angle of pi up to here, subtracted by pi over four. So pi minus pi over four. This just, is, this just equals to four over four minus pi over four, that equals to, well, three pi over four, like that. Yeah, so basically, if I write this down, so th pi, I mean, theta three equals to three pi over four, and for completeness, if we go backwards all the way across there, we get our pi four, and this one we could see this as, well, pi, the absolute value is gonna be uh, this full pi plus pi over four. So uh, absolute value of, of theta uh, of theta four is equal to, this is the absolute value of it, this is gonna be pi plus pi over four. In other words, four over four, this equals to five pi over four. But it, since uh, we have clockwise is negative, what we have is theta four is equal to negative five pi over four, like that. So now we have to just connect all them together. So in other words, if we go all the way back here, if R is negative, then we're dealing with this, so we have theta three or four. If R is positive, we can use theta one or theta two. So let's take a look at that. So we have if R is greater than zero, then we, we have is the points, we have the points, yeah, I'll write this as P for polar, and R number is just square root two, and then the theta is theta one or theta two. So theta one is just, uh, that's over here, theta one is right here, yeah, seven pi over four. 
7 pi over 4, which is equals to the, it's the exact same thing, or p, and then it's a square root 2, and then we have negative uh, pi over 4 for theta 2, like that. So negative pi over 4, like that. This is theta 2, this is theta 1. If r is less than 0, we have p of negative square root 2, and now we have theta 3, or theta 4, so 3 pi over 4. And then, or p negative square root 2, and then we have negative 5 pi over 4 negative 5 pi over 4. So many, many ways of doing it. Yeah, so if we sum this up, so thus, you know, write it here, so thus the Cartesian point, uh, point like this, I'll write the C1, negative 1, is equal to, equal to, yeah, the polar coordinates these are the ones I just did right now. I should replace that coordinates just with po points. So the polar points, polar coordinate points, and I'll write these as P of, now these are the above, square root 2. This is going to be 7 pi over 4. Or uh, P, so instead of or, I'll just put a comma for n. So comma, uh, this is square root 2 and negative pi over 4 and also comma now we have this negative one so yeah, as you can see it's just uh, with polar you can have unlimited types and then you have this there 3 pi over 4 and and let's write yeah, let's comma again p and square root 2 negative 5 pi over 4 etc and infinitely more, infinite, or just infinite many more, like that. Because you could just add a 2 pi 360 degrees and loop it around multiple times. You can go back and forth around it like that and get to the same angle like I've done in my early videos on the uh, connection between polar and Cartesian, so check those out. So, so now just another note again as I went over here. So the equations tan theta and r squared equals x squared plus y squared does not uniquely determine theta when x and y are given because as theta increases through the interval from 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 360 degrees, this is in radians, each value of tan theta occurs twice. Therefore, in converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates, it's not good enough to just find r and theta that satisfy tan theta and r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And as in this example, we must choose theta and r because it could be positive or negative so that the point r theta lies in the correct quadrant, etc. as I've just done there. So anyways, this is a pretty in-depth example on this. Uh, and I just wanted to illustrate just how how uh, deep that it, this goes to converting Cartesian to polar, just how advanced you can make it. But you could obviously just quickly use the exact trig ratio and find this angle, etc., and then put a negative sign for the convention, and you're good to go. But I just wanted to show that you could do much more and see how there's just many, many different ways of, of solving the same uh, example. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.